Hello everyone, it's Karen here. Welcome, welcome to another video with me where today we're going to create this card using the fabulous little Sebastian Seahorse stamp. He is so grand and the detail on him is amazing. We're going to set him in the ocean and we're going to put some sea tangled foliage around him and create these bubbles. And I don't know if you can see, but I've glossed the bubbles to make them shine a bit. So we're going to use greens and blues because that's what the ocean is like, a mixture of greens and blues. We're going to use an A5 size card. So that is 15 centimeters along and 21 centimeters high. You can cut down the proportions. You don't need it to be this big, but I just think for such a grand little fellow, he needs a statement. So we'll get started by using these inks. Twisted Citron, Cracked Pistachio are the ones that I've used to give us the green part of the ocean and Mermaid Lagoon and Salty Ocean for the blue part of the ocean. So we'll take our card and we will take first the greens. We're going to start with Twisted Citron and I'm going to smoosh a bit on my mat and take my spritzy bottle and just gently spritz the ink. Now I hope you can see that. Let me just hold it up a bit closer to you. You can see that I haven't put so much water in there that it's completely fluid. I've got this little bubbles all over the place and we want that and I'll show you why in a second. And then I'm just going to take my card and I'm just going to gently tap it. Now, look at that. We want these bubbles because that's going to give us extra effect as part of the ocean. Now I'm aiming for more green at this part of the card, but look, you have so much fun with it. Now don't waste what's left here. We'll use that on another piece of card, but for today I shall not. And what I'm going to now do is I'm going to dry it and then I'm going to go in with each of my next three colours. I dry in between to get the look that I want. see some areas here I've pressed the card hard into the inks so that I get this really flowy smushed effect and others I've just tapped it ever so lightly to give me what will look like bubbles when we've dried it all. So you can see I just used a piece of paper towel there to dab up the pools of ink that were left. I want it to be completely dry before I start my stamping. 
And whilst I quite like that, I've got a mixture of quotes bubbles from the ink, as well as some soft smushy areas, I actually would still like a bit more green. So I'm going to go in with my cracked pistachio one more time and give me a bit of green. Now, it's okay to keep going backwards and forwards with your colors because they're dry. So wet onto dry gives you layers. Wet on wet gives you smushing and blending. And because I want it to look layered, just like the ocean would be, that's why I'm drying it between each of the colours that I'm applying. And you can see, as you've added more water, the ink becomes more fluid. I'm going to dry that before I wipe my mat, in case I want to use some more. No, I'm quite happy with that now. Again, I'm just going to dry off these tiny bits of pools of paint. Yes, you see, by adding that final little piece of craft pistachio, I've got more of a sea look here in this corner. And I wanted that because that's where I'm going to put my dream. So, you'll see when I was drying it, I was holding the card up. That's so that the air can get through the back of the card. It's much harder to do it when it's on a flat surface. So I pick it up, turn it over at times. So now your card is not completely flat. It's in fact looking a bit sad for itself. But look at that gorgeous colour. Gorgeous, gorgeous colour. So either you can put it on some heavy books to flatten it out or what I do is, is I've got these two little breadboards that I got and one of these clamps, quick grip clamps, and I would put the card in the middle of it and go and make myself a cup of tea. So here we are. My card is a little flatter and for this, because of the detail within Sebastian, I want to use my stamping platform. When I do have a detailed stamp, and particularly when I've got lots of texture on my background, I want to be sure that I'm going to get my nice crisp image. And if you haven't used one of these before, it enables you to reposition and restamp without losing the spacing. I always have a piece of clear acetate which I store with my stamping platform. And that is so that I can position my stamp without marking my card. So I have put my stamp onto my lid and I'm going to ink him up. As I keep saying, he's a very detailed stamp, gorgeous, gorgeous boy. So I'm going to make sure that he is well inked. I'm using VersaFine Clear Nocturne. That always gives me a lovely crisp image. Now I'm going to position him halfway along the card, giving me space to put some foliage around here and along the bottom. Beautiful, look at him. And the next thing I'm going to do is take my foliage stamp, if you like, C Tangle. And I'm going to be using two colours, VersaFine Clair Vedant and Warm Breeze for the foliage. Again, tap, tap, tap to ink up my stamp. And I'm going to start by placing the first piece of foliage along there and then I'm going to go in with Vedant and I'm going to place that 
next to it. So you can see by doing it a second generation you get quite a different look to the first one that I did. So we've got lots of texture and lots of things happening in this sea background and now I'm going to use sea bubbles. Oh my goodness, this is a lovely stamp, very delicate. Look, I'm going to stamp it off here and you can see, just isn't that beautiful? So I'm using Sea Breeze again and the first set of bubbles that I'm going to do is coming out of Sebastian and then I'm just going to put bubbles all around the rest of the foliage because bubbles do come up from the bottom of the sea all those lovely sea cucumbers and sea anemones I'm just rubbing off a bit of this stamp at the bottom so that I don't over stamp all of my sea tangled foliage. So I'm just creating lots of little bubbles around here. I'm just going to get rid of this because I just want a few bubbles popping up there. Now There we go. Then what I'm going to do is take my dream. This comes from the word set inspire me and I think you get four words in that set. Stamp it off first and I'm just going to put it just there. Subtly in the background. Now I'm going to take Blueprint Sketch because what would the ocean be without a touch of Blueprint Sketch and my smoothie and I'm going to go all the way around the edge. Circular motion. This just frames the card and gives it a bit of extra depth. I am going to talk about how I mount my cards because I did see a question as to they wished we'd show them how we mount our cards because we always say here's the finished card and of course it's not finished so I thought I'd take you through that process too and the reason I'm mentioning that now is because blueprint sketch is one of my favorite colors so what I did was I took the ink on a piece of white card I took it to a card shop, a shop that sells lots of coloured card, and I matched it and I bought it in A3 sheets. I bought, I think, about 20 sheets. So I now know that I've always got exactly the right colour to mount my cards. Now I'm going to frame and mount it before I add the glossy accents here to the bubbles. So often when I'm framing a card, I will use white because it makes it stand out. Because if I had put it directly onto this card, you'd lose some of it. So I often start with a white background and then I will mount it onto the colour. So as I said, about a three mil gap. Now, days gone by, I used to measure it, measure the size of the card and add three mil and add three mil and cut it. These days I do not. I hold my card against the backing and I cut it on my paper trimmer. I just eyeball it. 
So whichever works for you, and that's what I would do. The first thing I would do is decide on the first mount, and then I will glue it. The glue that I use is Cosmic Shimmer. It dries clear, quickly, but it does give you a few seconds to manipulate the card if you don't put it in exactly the right place the first time. And then a good, solid, even amount of, well, perhaps not so even, is it? <laughs> of glue. And then I'll just take the corners off, rubbing it onto my apron, <laughs> so it doesn't squidge too much out the outside. And then I will bring my card back in. And as I said, because you've got a few minutes to maneuver the card, you can put it into the right place. Then I will take another piece of card, paper, and I will just spread it all the way over the card. That way, any ink that you've got on your fingers does not transfer onto the card. And you can make sure that any glue, perhaps, is soaked up by this card. And it's held down really firmly. Now, I actually didn't put that exactly straight, so I've got a smaller border here than on here. So I will now go with my paper trimmer and just gently slice off a tiny point millimeter um, of card off this side. And two more steps left. I'm going to take my contrasting card. Now this could either be the folding card or a mount. And again, creating a bit of an overlap here. So the frame on the second mount is usually about six mil, something like that, all the way around. But again, I have cut it on my guillotine. As you can see, it's rolling because as I told you, I buy it in those big rolls. So, but that flattens out as soon as I've got the glue onto it. And I'm going to do the same. I always glue from the top down. So my image first, then to the next frame, and then the next. I don't glue the mats and then put my image on the top. And the reason I don't do that is because if I get it skew with, it's easier to sort out this way. And again, taking my piece of card and that's why I'm not putting my glossy accents on first, because otherwise it would get smudged by doing it this way. There we go. Beautiful. And then if I was going to mount it onto a white card, I'm not, I'm going to leave this because I'm going to put it on my bookshelf. And then you would just mount the other card in the same way. So the final thing we're going to do is I'm going to take glossy accents. This is a clear dimensional medium and it is great for things, it dries clear, but it gives you that water look or varnished look. You can also use it as a glue. It is quite strong, so it will glue things like sequins and lace. So I'm just dotting. You can see I'm not overthinking this. I'm just dotting some of the bubbles, not all of the bubbles, because if you think about bubbles, as we all do all the time. No, if you think about bubbles, some of them glisten in the light and some of them don't. When I made my first sample for you, I thought I must remember to tell them <laughs> that if you're right-handed, you ought to start on this side and then there's less likelihood of you smudging. If you're left-handed, obviously you'll start just like I did. So you start on this side and move across. And here I am not doing that. 
and that's okay. We'll just revolve the card around. So that's how you'll get round it. So I'm just dotting all these bubbles. So this clear medium, it levels itself. Sometimes if you shake it, don't shake it, but sometimes if you do happen to have a shake in it, you land up with bubbles in the clear dimensional medium. And then I just use a pin to pop those bubbles. Oh, yes, I like him. Isn't he a grand little fellow? Thank you so much for joining me today. And if you make this, I'd love to see it. Please tag me. And until the next time, thanks for watching.